This morning, I decided to go against tradition, and instead of preaching on the gospel reading, to speak on the epistle reading. The reason for this is I believe that today's epistle reading is for the practical life. What the creed that Father Gregory has been speaking about is for the theological life. If you take anything today from today's homily, I want it to be that you will hang on to that bulletin. Cut out the epistle reading, put it in your wallet, put it in your pocket, tape it to your refrigerator, your mirror, but read it over and over and over again. You have the creed committed to memory, commit this epistle reading to memory. Brethren, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. Here, St. Paul begins to list all the gifts that are given. The gifts of prophecy, of service, of teaching, of giving alms, of helping, acts of mercy. We Orthodox Christians believe that when we are chrismated, when we receive that chrism, the Holy Spirit communicates to us a gift Oftentimes, especially for those that are chrismated when we're infants, it's like a seed. And our mission in life, if you will, is to discover what that gift is. And as St. Paul reminds us, and to use it. Let us use it. If God has given you a gift and you do not use it, more importantly, you do not use it for the building up of his body. We are guilty as the man who buried the talent. You may ask, Father, I don't know what my gift is. What is it? Everything. Everything. Everything in your life that is good, everything in your life that is beautiful and true is a gift from God. And its purpose is not to sit on, but first of all, to give God thanksgiving, to offer up that doxology, and then to take those gifts and to use them for a neighbor for the church, for the stranger? How do we recognize these gifts? The answer to that, my friends, is humility. Again, to remember that everything in our life, nothing is owed. Everything is given as a gift. St. Paisios used to always say, all is a gift from our Christ. And someone decided to get into a little argument with him. Just as a little background, when St. Paisios had a question about prayer, the Virgin Mary herself appeared to him and explained it to him. So why anyone would get into an argument with someone whose answers or questions are answered by the Virgin Mary herself, I don't know. But they were trying to find something good in life that isn't a gift from God. And they came up with this idea. They said, what about a good thought? I had a good thought about someone. It's my thought. I thought it. How can that be a gift from God? And St. Paisios, I think at this time, exasperated with this pilgrim, says, not even the good thoughts in your head those two are a gift of grace. The only thing in your head you can take credit for 
if you must have something, is what comes out of your head through your nose, thus ending the debate. Let love be genuine, St. Paul continues. Anipokritos. This means not hypocritical, not selfish, no hidden agendas. To love with that love that seeks not its own. Hate what is evil. And here we have to pause. St. Paul is very clear. He says, hate what is evil. We often interpret that as hate who is evil. And who is evil but the person who irritates me, the person who upsets me. No, hate what is evil. And it's important to remember here that the evil that we must hate first and foremost is the evil within us. If that evil is living within us and we try to hate the evil in our neighbor, the darkness of our hypocrisy, that apocritos will be discovered. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with brotherly affection. And then there's this, this line, this absolute gem of St. Paul. Outdo one another in showing honor. It's not enough to just thank someone for the gift that they give us, but we must repay them. We must give back. We must try to give more than they've given to us. In our life as Orthodox Christians, we realize this at every divine liturgy. The priest takes the bread and the wine, symbols of human culture, of the labor, of time, of talent, and offers it to God. But says, Thine own of thine own we offer to you in all and for all. Again, even the liturgy reminds us that we have nothing of our own to give to God, but what he has first given to us. And God receives this gift. The Father receives this gift, this humble, simple gift of a piece of bread and a cup of wine. And here he outdoes us even more. He sends his Holy Spirit upon that bread and wine and it becomes the body and blood of his Son that he gives to us as the food that is unto eternal life. Never flag in zeal. The English translation that we heard today goes on to say, be aglow with the Spirit. Be aglow with the Holy Spirit. The Greek word there is zeondes, comes from the verb zeo, which in ancient Greek has the meaning of boiling over. The hot water that the priest adds to the communion shortly before we receive communion is called the zeon. What does it mean to boil over with the Holy Spirit? It means it's not, or He is not, something that we can contain, we can keep to ourselves. When that pot boils over, the whole room is filled with steam. The stove and the counter are covered in water. So full of the Holy Spirit that it literally bubbles over and fills the world around us. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in your hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. I believe that these three are are very intimately connected. Rejoice in your hope. And again, here, the opposite is true. That hope is not a what, but a who. Rejoice in Christ. He is our hope because He is the resurrection and the life. Then it goes on, be patient in tribulation. If we have rejoiced in our hope, if we trust in Christ, 
if we throw ourselves at that love that is stronger than death itself, we will be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Pray without ceasing. A thousand books, a million sermons could be given just on this one line. But I think if we truly ask ourselves, what is this to pray without ceasing? How do I acquire this prayer? We must look right before, be patient in tribulation. My friends, if we are patient in tribulation, we will realize that Christ is present there with us. As the prophets of old were patient in the tribulation of Hades itself, Christ in his love emptied himself and descended even unto death. We were patient in our tribulation because we rejoiced in Christ our hope. We will recognize even in the hells that we create for ourselves that Christ never ceases to descend within them, never abandons us. How can we not but call upon him day and night at every moment, recognizing that he is all things? Contribute to the needs of the saints and practice hospitality. Here we seem to have a little bit of a redundancy, but that contribute to the needs of the saints is a reference to the community itself. Contribute to the needs of the parish, of your neighbor, of those who are sitting with you. This isn't just a financial contribution, but it goes back to the beginning of the epistle reading about those gifts. We are to build up the church with those gifts. Then right after that it says, practice hospitality. The Greek word here is philoxenia. The love of the stranger. We are responsible here, not just for our community, not just for those who gather between these walls, but we as the Orthodox Church, as the body of Christ in Birmingham on the south side, are responsible to minister to the needs and to witness to the truth of our risen Christ. It concludes with, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. St. Silouan of Manathos tells us that the measure of our growth in Christ can be determined by how much we love our enemies. Indeed, this love of enemy is that love that is most truly genuine because it is a love devoid of all self and self-seeking. A love that is true. A love that was revealed to us on the cross by Christ who called on his Father to give, forgive those who were crucifying him. And not just to forgive them, but he even goes as far as to justify them. Forgive them, they know not what they do. Bless those who persecute you. The word bless has the meaning of saying a good word. Those who persecute you, do not curse them, but speak well of them. Speak well of them. May Christ, our true God, who has revealed to us in these few words of St. Paul, the key, I believe, to having a church that's alive, a city that's filled with grace, if we just take this, put it in your pocket, put it on your refrigerator, as I said, commit it to memory, I'll test you next week. If just this community, or even just one person in this community, could live what St. Paul has here described for us, the world would be changed. May Christ our God guide us and be with us. Amen.